Okay, it's time to dive into the final big album of the year, at least in my mind. Like, I'm sure I'm going to, now that all the big releases are out, I'm going to take my time and go back and look at all the, the releases that I had missed throughout the year, just to kind of tie up this year with a really nice bow. But this was the last one that I was really excited about, one that I've been looking forward to throughout most of the year. So let's dive into it. Witter Shins by Gandalf's Fist. So Gandalf's Fist is an English progressive rock band getting their start in the mid 2000s uh, and you know, kind of came out of the big, like, fourth or fifth wave of progressive rock, and uh, I've been really a big fan of theirs pretty much since The Forest of Fey back in 2014. They were able to blend a lot of the retro prog that we were getting of that time, of Spock's Beard and the Flower Kings, but putting a, a little bit more of a sharp edge without going straight up into, like, the heavy prog aspects of, like, Riverside or Aiken or any of those guys. There was always this, this more emphasis on rock, more emphasis on energy and power that I just feel as though, you know, Spock's Beard and Flower Kings and all those were much more interested on creating a vibe, you know, creating this, this big grand sound. And I love the energy that the Forest of Fae had. Now, this was followed up by the Quark, Quarkwork? Clockwork Fable in 2016, which ended up being one of my favorite albums. Like, this one is a full-on, like, big, big progressive rock album. It's a three-disker with interlude spoken play, like radio play, uh, that I just friggin' fell in love with. And then they followed this up with the Clockwork Prelude, which was a double-disc prequel of uh, the Clockwork Fable. So yeah, one-two punch, really, really great. Uh, and then they've basically just been kind of remastering, re-releasing some of their past works. And you know, they're all they're all pretty serviceable retro prog in that sense. Uh, but I was always craving, always ready for just another taste, another taste of um, some really juicy Gandalf's Fist. And now we have it with Wintershins. Uh, and one of the things like right off the, the get-go, this is a single single disc album. Uh, it's about an hour and 14 minutes of, uh, you know, there's not a big sprawling arc of a story that we have on this one, at least the one that doesn't immediately come to mind, but it does have that very classic Gandalf's Fist sound. It's very rocking in times. It's It's got that, that edge that I really, really enjoy, but married with that is something that I haven't heard from the band for quite some time, but a lot more folk influence. You know, I'm, I'm getting um, songs with that fife sound and the fiddle sound on it that I'm really, really enjoying of. And of course, we got the bigger stretching of tracks on here. The album itself ends with a 19 minute and 45 second epic that is one of the better epics of this year. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. The album opens up with Sacrament, which has this massive drive, something that Deep Purple would be very proud of. I'm getting that really deep and guttural Hammond B organ sound that John Lord would have. I'm loving that playing styles on the guitars on there. It's very rock and 70s style of music that doesn't that that flirts with the progressive rock style of things. It isn't until we get to the title track, the second track of Winter Shins, that that big epic prog comes in. And I will say, I'm a little lukewarm about this track. You know, it's 13 minutes and 33 seconds. And I don't know, it took a very long time to get going and to get started. And then once it did get going and get started, I wasn't a whole lot excited about what I was hearing in that sense. Like the guitars were okay, but never really, really stand out. The keyboard work on here was fine, but it never really stood out. The saving grace on here is the uh, vocal leads uh, that we heard on here. Luke Severn, uh, as as well as Dean Marsh on here was very, very good and prominent, and Carrie Farish on, as the, the woman vocalist on here. Her vocals on here really do elevate this from just a okay kind of style of track into a, a very enjoyable and really like really engaging listen. But after about, I'd say like the first three or four minutes up here, my mind does start to wander a little bit. It does start to kind of waver. And I do wonder if my mind has been trained with Gandalf's Fist music to listen into the story and to be engaged by the storyline and the characters and all that. Um, and without that, when I'm listening to this music, my mind just starts to wander a little bit. And I wonder if that's, you know, the double-edged sword of two back-to-back -back very standout and very prominent 
concept albums. Now, luckily, the album does pick up a little bit with the third track of the Haruspix, and I think I got that <laughs> correct. Um, I really like the playing styles and the the soundscapes that we have on here. There's a little bit more of like playing around and using a lot of echoes on here. There's a lot of smaller corners in this track for the music to kind of hide in a little bit more that I, I wonder how well that kind of serviced the track. Um, at least it, it provided me with something a little bit different to latch onto. It provided me with something a little little bit more yeah, like interesting to get myself into but once that that original flavor is used up I'm kind of left with a little bit of a nothing burger in that sense and this uh, this track is a little bit long uh, and more of the time I'm like yes give me a long song but I, I start to wonder if the runtime really did justify the length and I, I'm not quite sure if it did the fifth track of Dreamcatcher brings the album down a little bit for me, and I mean that more in tone rather than quality. It's reminding me of some of the smaller parts from the Clockwork Fable, and I, I don't know, my, my, my again, I'm really appreciating the, the lyrics on here, I'm really appreciating the singers that are found on here, but I'm, I'm looking for a little bit more crunch. I'm looking for a little bit more engagement in that sense. Now luckily the album picks up quite a bit with Wisp, even though I will say it, it takes a while, again, for it to get going and for it to actually start engaging with me. Now I do wonder if the actual title is like an homage to the Willow of the Wisp. Uh, or the will of the wisps, um, you know, these dancing lights that would lure people into their own doom and their own peril. But what I really enjoy is the gradual build of this track to a really lively almost jig at the end of it. It's got this big Celtic feel about it. The drumming on this one is very, very prominent and really engaging in that sense. And I love the combination of the fiddles with the fife at the end. It, it provides this infectious dance that I'm really, really excited excited about and it really draws me into the song very much like a will of the wisp you know it's this dancing light that i can't help but look at and slowly but surely i'm entranced and i'm i'm uh, enthralled about it and then we move on to Man of Signs, which is such an interesting track. Like it, it starts off once again, very soft, very slow. But as it starts to develop, I'm reminded of some of the more acoustic aspects of Opeth's middle albums, like everything from probably around Still Life all the way to about Ghost Reveries, uh, like the acoustic aspects of it. You know, I can feel like a Michael Eckefelt acoustic lick on here that provides a very gothic, very darker tone on this. Uh, and it's such an interesting inflection in this track and in this runtime of the album. But once we get past that, we are reintroduced to a lot of the more lively aspects, a lot more of the engaging aspects of this band. I do feel as though the track does get kind of capped off by the knees because, you know, we get into this very rock and very energetic aspect. The guitars are very soaring, they're very engaging. But then once we get to the latter part of this track, it slows right back down again and it loses all that momentum and all that energy that it had to kind of do a little bit of a face plant by the end. Then we come into the second last track before the big, big epic, or I guess the last track before the big, big epic of Witchmonger. And it's fine. I just... The thing that I, 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 I want to point out the positives first, like I love the wispy, raspy vocal works on here. The, the singing styles are very engaging in that sense. But um, yeah, I, I, I do feel as though Witchmonger kind of treads water and I, it probably could have been nixed without really losing anything uh, before we come into the big track of Cave. So let's talk about Cave. Let's talk about the big epic of this album. And uh, very obviously, this is the highlight. You can definitely see where the band put their emphasis on in this album, and it's this track. Um, it has the, the highest parts of this album. It has the most engaging parts on this album. And I love where we go within this album. There's a lot of peaks and valleys. I love that there are things that are hinted at at the beginning of this track that get recontextualized and realized by the end point of this track. It's very engaging. Everybody's on top form. I'm loving the keyboard works on this. I'm loving the powerhouse of the guitars on this. The vocals are just hitting beautifully. But I will say the ending of this track feels more like a whimper rather than a bang. And I think that goes against the main mythos of this track. I really wanted something really nice and oomph at the end of this track instead of just kind of a very s somber play out. It's still a beautiful 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes, had a really, really good time with it, but I do feel as though it kind of fluffed the landing at the end there. Uh, I still think that this, this track has some of the highlights on this album, but 
Uh, it's just kind of left a little bit on the colder side for me. So yeah, in the end, this album was just a little bit of a letdown, but I mean, the, the, how can you follow up the Clockwork Fable and the Clockwork Prelude uh, with anything but like a masterpiece, you know? Uh, what I think probably would have helped this album out is if they kind of trimmed a little bit of the fat on here, like some of the midpoints, as I mentioned, like Dreamcatcher and Witchmonger, I think could have been left aside and tightened up to about, you know, uh, an album that's maybe about 50 minutes long rather than an hour and 14 minutes. This album is definitely too long, and that's luckily something that hadn't been really a big problem this year but yeah it's just a little bit on the long side uh and it, it does fight to keep my attention going on now that being said there's still some really powerful moments on here and has some really stand out gandalf's fist moments the opening track of sacrament the um horror spec uh wisp and the final track on here uh there's enough to really justify a listen to this album especially if you're a fan of the retro prog movement but if you're not a fan of the retro prog movement if you're not a big fan of you know just kind of treading water uh <laughs> this album might not necessarily be for you uh but i will at least say for my final rating of this album that winter shins by gandalf's fist is an album that i would still download you know, as I mentioned, there's enough on this album to get yourself invested in. There's enough on this album to really dive into and really lose yourself. Like, I have a good time listening to this album when I'm doing something else, like washing dishes or, you know, chores around the house or yard work or whatnot. Um, but it's not necessarily one that I will sit down and engage with, kind of like their previous albums. I do feel like this is an album that Gandalf's Fist needed to get out so that they can now concentrate on their next album. So... Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a lukewarm recommendation from me. It's a little bit of a lukewarm recommendation. But there you go. That's what I've got for Winter Shins from Gandalf's Fist. What do you guys think about this album? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And that's all I got for you guys today. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.